Hey, how you doing? This is John Von Signor talking politics. I'm sitting in a center chair. Paul Gable is sick today. I guess because of the results last night of the elections, he couldn't make it today. He's sick. But we do have Randall Wallace and Chuck Hotwell joining us today. We'll be right back after these messages. Good morning. Good morning. Good. Good. You're looking good, Chuck. I always. Oh my God, you're looking terrific. Beautiful, Hi, beautiful man. day here in Myrtle Beach. Well, that's good. What do you think of the results last night of the elections, Randall? Well, you know, it was it was kind of a fascinating return. Uh, uh, kind of a mixed bag of what you would have thought. Um, yeah, we're talking about Myrtle Beach, not the Surfside. Yeah, well, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but Myrtle Beach. Well, what was so uh, striking to you about that election this well, last night? I, you know, I, I think. You know, you had the two incumbents, Mike Chestnut and Doc and Dr. Render. They won. Who Big won? Time. Won outright, and they are sort of a you know stability in the city. But, they go back to yeah. the days when Mayor uh -huh. Rhodes and I and some right. of the other folks were there, and then you had a Mary Jeffco, who's also an incumbent, who uh, who maybe is more in line with the the new the new folks that have come on in the last couple of years, and John Crutch, who obviously is very much aligned with the mayor. So you had sort of. You know, a little bit of a split decision of directions the way the city's going. Uh, what's your take on it, Chuck? I was uh, not surprised, really. Um, I, 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 I was surprised that... Uh, <laughs> not surprised? Well, surprised. I'm not surprised, What really. are you talking about? You're well, the incumbents, <laughs> the, incumbents, the, incumbents, the incumbents basically were the big vote-getters. So, were you surprised about that? No, I wasn't. Uh, of course not, but Mike Chestnut, that was surprising. He beat Renda by over 800 votes. He right, came I was. Two. I agree. I was surprised. Right, that, that was uh, Renda. Renda showed a good showing uh, last yeah. night in the elections. Uh, but who who surprised me was Rain Gray. I thought he would do much better. Apparently, he didn't connect his time with the voters. Well, I think it's it's. I think that they voted really stability in what they had known, and 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 you know probably status quo. And yeah, but he had to talk about what he was going to do, not the past, what he did. He has to tell the people what he's doing because you have a lot of new voters. And if you take the results in Market Commons, Wayne Gray only got, let's see, uh, where's Gray? He only got 271 votes. And uh, John Crutch got uh, 679 votes, which is surprising and startling to me because Wayne knows the issues, and he's a, a trooper insofar as a, a go-getter and, and an innovator, and yet he didn't connect. Well, I think one thing about the reason that John Crutch did so well, you've got to realize, too, he, he, he lives there. That's, so that's, that's a, a neighbor that those folks know. He's been, and John's been active in their community you know, with their issues now for a while because John ran for council uh, four years ago, I believe. So, Against you? Uh, no, in this, he was in this, I think, in the same cycle. He never ran when I was running. But uh -huh. um, So, you know, John's been actually around. John Crutch has actually been around a little while. So those folks know him probably the best of any of the folks in the city. Well, what so is he now going to do? He's going to have a runoff against Mary uh, Jeffcoat, and they both are supporting uh, Brenda Bethune. <coughs> that's that's going to be a tight one, isn't it? I think it's going to be an interesting well, what is it, what is, uh, discussion. For them. What would you think uh, Crutch's uh, campaign is going to be centered around? You know, I just Replacing Mary? What did she do wrong in the last four years? I don't see anything she's done wrong. She's she's been an outstanding cow. I mean, she's she she very she works very hard. Mary works very hard, and she's always bringing ideas back. I used to serve with her, you know, nationally the city. She's always bringing things back um, for what she wanted to do with the city. But you know, he made he 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 went out and worked hard. He knocked on doors. I know he went into my neighborhood. I, I had some of my neighbors tell me that they had him come over there. And he always oh, around the Wallace. Then that's what you did. And uh, and I know he's talked. To, you know, he I've listened to his ads about the strategic plan that he wanted to support, which they are doing downtown now. So I don't know. It's going to be but a there's very a lot of empty buildings uh, still. And, and I was going to be where Kmart was that whole that whole shopping area. <coughs> just empty buildings. Well, what, would, what would they be doing there? Where, where is he uh, planning on that? Do you know? I, I, I don't at the moment um, where the, where they are well, with, they with individual things. Buildings. That's what uh, Tim 
uh, two of you has been uh, complaining about. You know, and that's one of the things that I had I had, had had talked a little bit about when I was when I was still on council was that you know we're doing a lot of retail space here and the internet is really doing is is, is doing a number and, and granted and I, I always thought we needed to be more business friendly. And I think we haven't you have always to done concentrate well. on the entire city rather than just one particular area, uh, such as Market Commons. What do you think, Chuck? I'm glad to see they're doing something with that old area downtown. I really am. You mean where uh, Kmart was? That empty? Well, area? that well, we'll say the super block, uh, uh, old, which is over here. Right, uh, but where Kmart was. Well, that's not the super block, is that? No, no, the no, super block that, is right no, here. Super right, block right, is well, down the street. Yeah, we're talking about Kmart. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I'm, with I'm you. glad. I'm just glad to see them starting to revitalize that whole area. Downtown Myrtle Beach needs it. So they should concentrate the well, next no, couple of years no, on downtown? No, they're, they're Myrtle Beach, and I think they need to cater to the voters and the constituents in the areas that elected them. Uh -huh. I don't think they need to get into the county, let the county do their job, let Myrtle Beach do their job. City Council. Okay. Yeah, and I, I, well, I, I, I agree with that. I think that, you know, they ought to, people need to, you know, your, your plate's pretty full doing what you're supposed to be doing anyway. I agree. You know? But I, I would give the city, you know, their, their high marks. They're starting to concentrate on, on some areas. You know, one of the things that happened, I think, is, is you did have an aging area where we had explosive growth on the north end of the beach and the south end of the beach where Market Commons was, you know, as that all was happening when we were there. But you had this one area that is has gotten older and, and maybe, needs to have a new direction. Um, I think one of the things they, they need to do is, is, you know, we were looking at that with the library and the, and the Children's Museum, but have some kind of draw that will bring people downtown and then invite people to start li moving down here, you know, so that you would have a, a synergy with some people that live here, because that's one of the things that is not here. Look at the housing that's going up at Market Commons. It's really uh, advanced, wow. Yeah, and that's a different more thing. More and more, and the traffic is getting worse and worse. I was out at 12 o'clock last night, and the traffic at, at Market Commons reminded me of Times Square, New York. Well, and There's that's so, so much traffic. But that's why that area is thriving like it is. Yeah, is because but, you've got. But the there you go. The, the concentration was on that area as opposed to the well, downtown area, and especially how many years now ha has that been empty uh, on Twenty First Street, where uh, we had the uh, former um, uh, stores uh, by Barrows and Chapin. Oh, where the mall was. Well, yeah, 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 it's, it's, it's been, been yeah, it's, mall, huh? it's been a while. Like that's that, that, that like that's been a city. while. It's been since you've been elected. Yeah, they closed that mall. I want to say two thousand seven, maybe six or seven. Yeah. Uh, oh, 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 I'm getting so grossly involved in the conversation. I forgot <laughs> we have to take a break. I'm sorry about that. So sponsors, I'm sorry about that. Here's our sponsor. Here you go. Listen to them and maybe go visit them. Here you go. Hey man, I'm on my way to the finest place for everyone to play. Where the drinks are cool and the sun is hot and the Myrtle's in this marsh walk. Enjoy spectacular waterfront dining and live music with breathtaking saltwater marsh views at the Merle's Inlet Marsh Walk. Marsh Walk, where the view, the music, and the fun are always free. Marsh Walk, Highway 17 Business, Waterfront, Merle's Inlet. Red Brothers Grill, and as a server here, I'd like to make sure everybody has amazing service and good fresh food every single day. We serve lunch and dinner from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., our happy hours from 4 to 7, and we're located on 5900 North Kings Highway. Follow us on Facebook at Brothers Grill Myrtle Beach. P. Reynolds by the Ocean is a restaurant and live performance space with an open jazz jam every Thursday at 6 p.m. Are you looking for something special, something new, something different on the Grand Strand? Great food, cool jazz. You'll find it only at P. Reynolds Jazz Supper Club, located at 1212 North Kings Highway in Myrtle Beach. P. Reynolds by the Ocean, something special in Myrtle Beach. Here at Angelo's, we have a fantastic Italian buffet with your favorite pasta served with meatballs and sausage and delicious gourmet pizzas. 
but where we really shine is our entrees like our scampi traditional, alfredo or lemon romano served over linguine, our French pork chops with garlic mashed potatoes, and our twin fillets featuring our signature marsala sauce. It's a great place to enjoy with family and friends, so stop by and see us at our new location at the corner of 24th Avenue South and South Kings Highway. Don't just take my word for it. Come in and try Angelo's, home of the greatest steaks in the universe. Hi, this is John Bonsignor. Uh, pinch hitting today for Paul Gable. Paul Gable was sick. Uh, we have Rem Wallace and the Honorable Chuck Otwell. I call him Honorable only because he's been so active in the community for so many, many years. I got carried away uh, before we had the break and we were talking about uh, the old mall at 21st Street. That's just been an empty lot, more or less. You had, at one time, they had the Children's Museum there. Is it still there? I don't, I don't see it. I think they may have They have a, a zip line there or something. They have a, the trampoline. Yeah, uh, whatever they have. Uh, it like doesn't there. add, it doesn't attract anything to the city. Well, actually, those, those jump, those rock and jumps, or whatever they call those things, are they're trampoline parks where you can take your kids and they play. It's in a building there where the Office Max was. Or actually kind of draws around communities now. So apparently it's doing fairly well. They have the big car shows, you know, which I was just amazed how many people that draws. That's wow. a huge oh, yeah, amount of sure, sure. Yeah. But, but, but again, again, what's the future plans? Would you know of any future plans, what they're doing there? I, I'm not real sure. That's, you know, Burroughs and Chapin owns that, and they, they had some reasons for why they they closed that mall, and of course, when they moved, built the other one. And uh, they had the same thing going on here at, at downtown. Well, well that's what the business people are complaining about. You have all of these empty stores, you have these uh, vacant areas, and there's no attraction there to bring people into the area. Uh, the Sheridan there draws a lot of uh, people. You have the convention center, but that's about all. But I think if you're going to to, to solve your downtown problem, where you've got a lot of these empty storefronts, that's one of the things I do think you're going to have to do. Is is uh, that's what I had talked about when I was running, which I'm not anymore. Yeah, but, okay, um, we know that, Randall, but, but, but maybe next I, time you're going to run. We know but, that, but, Randall, but, so it's not giving a pitch. Go ahead. But anyway, but it was a home ownership initiative and then some yep. things to draw people to live here because you're going to have to have people. Because nowadays if people but don't the go to the stores. the frustration is there's nothing. They don't see any movement there. But you've got to do something so that's going to draw they, people living here to come down because I, I don't think... Uh, People aren't doing the retail store anymore like they used to. I mean, I mean, you, you still got some that do it, but you know the reason you see these empty places is people aren't going to the Kmart. Well, and here's, shopping a retail, here's a retail guy that would know. Is that right, Chuck? No, I think Randall's a hundred percent correct. I, I, I bought two items yesterday off the internet. I, I just, it is just so convenient, and they offered me free shipping and stuff. Mm. Golly. I, 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 so the retail stores are mostly going out. Is that what you're saying? They're being pushed I just think out there's by a, the I think there's a internet. paradigm shift going on where people are, are not doing the same things they were doing. You know, the baby boomers or the millennials are not doing okay, the same so thing. Okay, so where's the doing. vision for the future then? Well, you've what got are we the, going to talk, the, talk about just shop, stay home, and shop on the internet. Well, I don't think that'll out. ever. I don't think retail ever go away. But you've got to give them an attraction to go out. But you've got to you've got to build your market for the attraction. But well, well, market like what? Well, I think bringing people to live in downtown. Like what? Then those bringing people are going to go shop at whatever stores you've got there because they're going to be right here. You know, building, you know, that live workspace. So you have to give them an attraction. Or, 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 or trying to get more homeowners into the neighborhoods. But they, um, uh, you have to you, give them an attraction, is that correct? Well, well I what think, is the attraction then? Just houses? Well, no, I mean, you, 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 build, you build the commercial that goes with the housing you got. That's why Market Commons is doing so well now as opposed to when we first built it. I can remember when it looked like a movie set out there because you would drive up and all of a sudden you were, you were the Market Commons was sitting there. But the Piggly Wheelie struggled, which went out of business eventually. Well, that was a lease deal. There. But, the Piggly, they didn't struggle. They were doing very well. But, but, but they had a lease deal. That but you've got a grocery problem. store. you got to have people living there to go shop. It, <laughs> it was an exorbitant price that they wanted to for at least for the next 10 years, so you couldn't but, do but, it, I didn't blame them. But the reason that Market Commons has now doing so much better than it was is because you got all the housing out but there. But there's such, such greed out there. They don't worry about the people, the traffic, the air pollution, the services in which they have to provide. They're just throwing these houses up. They just throw a helter skelter right next to one another. So you say, hi Chuck, and you'll hear it the two doors away. <laughs> I mean, they're right on top of each other. But there's, I think, no, there's no room 
at all. But I think when downtown. You're about gonna, room, <clears throat> but uh, and I think downtown that you're going to do you're going to cater to a different thing, which is going to be like probably what? like you young, younger like people. Like what? 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 Young people who are going to be willing to live people, in Young people, they don't have money to spend. They're, you're still going on their mother, uh, mother's and father's pocketbooks. Well, uh, what, uh, spend what? But, but that's, spend I think, what? that's going to be key to get it is. You're giving free education, free health tech, free everything. What are they going to contribute? What, what are, when are they going to contribute? When are well, they going I to spend the money? When are they going to realize enough is enough? We can't keep doing this for you. We cannot keep giving you all these goodies. You have to contribute to society yourself. Uh, I think young what people are What are you doing? doing what are you telling us here? I do think young people are contributing. I thought you were conservative. I am, but I'm not the way you're speaking. But anyway, let's talk about, uh, <laughs> we got to change this subject because it's getting hot and heavy and Chuck Hartwell's just sitting there and wondering what next he's going to say. Look, he's smiling. That's the first time I've seen him smile in three years. But anyway, <laughs> let, let, me, let me ask you this. I know you've been a big fan of Richard Nixon. And <laughs> he's been thrown under the bus and dragged through all of this mud for so many years. But he's done such wonderful things for the United States. And you are an advocate. You are a, a student of Richard Nixon. So I, I did. I just went the out. Opportunity the opportunity now is for you to... Well, I, I just resurrect him somewhat. <laughs> well, I just went out um, as you, if, as I guess that's what you referred to. I had gone to the presidential library about a week and a half ago. Which library? The Richard Nixon presidential okay, library. People don't know what you're talking about. And, um, well, anyway, I did. I had a great time out there. But, but you know, I think President Nixon's stature is rising, despite you know the the you know the everybody wants to concentrate on Watergate, but there are doing more research. Historians are now about all the other aspects of his of his time in office and the tapes that are. There's an enormous amount of, of, of tapes in which Watergate is just Did a very small part. Did you hear any of the part. tapes while you were out there? Uh, no, no, and I would tour the, tour the museum, but I went through the old Vietnam exhibit that was there on China. You know, we opened up China. But he also did a lot of domestic um, um, policy things that, that you don't think about. EP, the Environmental Protection Agency, which originally was not kind of the agency you see today. It was an agency to, to deal with things like there was an oil spill in California and the Cuyahoga River in Ohio caught on fire. And so they formed that to try to... to to do something about the, uh, the the pretty serious pollution problem and environmental problems that they were having at the time, he did the Environmental Protection Act, the Clean Water and Clean Air Act. People don't realize, you know, those kind of things that he had been involved with. The Marine Mammal Protection Act. Uh, you know, he went in and changed the workforce. You know, OSHA is a pro program that, that Nixon. He's done a lot for civil rights too. I think. Oh yeah, especially in in the area with American Indians. Uh, you know, he, he returned. Uh, some sacred lands that had been taken through the years uh, back to a couple of the tribes, restored the, um, the Minami, I guess, Indian tribe that had been removed as an official um, tribe. He gave them their, uh, what do you call, self-determination. You know, they had, for many years, the program had been to... to uh, but he's done a lot for the rights. interior, too. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's the, all of the lands that we have out west, he's, he's preserved a lot of them, and he's made them more accessible to the public. Hasn't he? Yes, sir. And, uh, and I'll, tell yeah, you, yeah. I'll tell you another thing that he gets very little credit for that I think is probably one of the major accomplishments of, of, of his time, which, you know, he declared a war on cancer back in, when right. he first came on. He, ha he uh, appropriated $1 billion to cancer yeah. research. And, and, and the National Cancer Institutes and those things, he put some money into that. And, uh -huh. and, you know, people don't realize, you know, his goal was to find a cure for cancer within a certain number of years. And that, of course, had, has not happened. But... The amount of research and the and the things that have changed, it is cancer is not the death sentence that it was before President Nixon was president. It, you, you, it's it's we've come a long way, and I think we're heading in the right direction. And a lot of that is from his desire to do something about fighting that disease. Well, well Chuck Owell has something to add to that with about uh, Reagan, right? Like, well, there we go. We have to stop. We have to stop. Here comes our commercials. Just. P. Reynolds by the Ocean is a restaurant and live performance space with an open jazz jam every Thursday at 6 p.m. Are you looking for something special, something new, something different on the Grand Strand? Great food, cool jazz. You'll find it only at P. Reynolds Jazz Supper Club, located at 1212 North Kings Highway in Myrtle Beach. P. Reynolds by the Ocean, something special in Myrtle Beach.
Heart Brothers Grill, and as a server here, I like to make sure everybody has amazing service and good fresh food every single day. We serve lunch and dinner from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., our happy hours from 4 to 7, and we're located on 5900 North Kings Highway. Follow us on Facebook at Brothers Grill Myrtle Beach. Hey, my, I'm on my way to the finest place for everyone to play. Drinks are cool if the sun is hot and the Myrtle's in this marsh walk. Enjoy spectacular waterfront dining and live music with breathtaking saltwater marsh views at the Merle's Inlet Marsh Walk. Marsh Walk, where the view, the music, and the fun are always free. Marsh Walk, Highway 17 Business, Waterfront, Merle's Inlet. Here at Angelo's, we have a fantastic Italian buffet with your favorite pasta served with meatballs and sausage and delicious gourmet pizzas. But where we really shine is our entrees like our scampi traditional, Alfredo or lemon romano served over linguine, our French pork chops with garlic mashed potatoes, and our twin fillets featuring our signature marsala sauce. It's a great place to enjoy with family and friends, so stop by and see us at our new location at the corner of 24th Avenue South and South Kings Highway. Don't just take my word for it. Come in and try Angelo's, home of the greatest steaks in the universe. Here at Angelo's. Hi, John Bonsignor, how are you doing? Chuck Utwell and Randall Wallace. We just took a break somewhat to listen to commercials and Chuck is gonna tell us about Ronald Reagan. But before we do, let me just say this. If you wanna capture any of our shows, you can go to YouTube and type in Talking Politics, S like in Sam, C like in Charlie, S-C, and Click it on, and there our shows will be on. Is that correct, Jay? Yes. Jay, our producer, is yelling in the background, yes. Okay, Chuck, going back to you, what do you want to say about Ronald Reagan? You knew him, I guess, yeah, right? he worked for Ronald Reagan. <laughs> no, he, he, I, worked, I worked for the California Franchise Tax Board when he was the governor of California. Mm -hmm. So what about it? Well, what do you want to tell us that any he, he was just, bon mots, so they say, a little tidbits? Uh, what do you want to tell about Ronald? Or not? Uh, yes, no, yes. No, he was he was an interesting. Uh, he he kind of did the uh, thing where he let the agency heads rule the agencies. Uh -huh. He gave them the tools to do it, which you learn in management one hundred and one, uh -huh. hopefully. Uh, and and it, it worked very well. Oh, okay. The other interesting thing is when I worked for Adolph Coors Company. Uh, no plugs, please. Say a beer company. No beer course. company. Just say a beer, beer company. company in Colorado. They're not paying us, so we're not going to promote them. Beer company in Colorado. So uh, what about it? He came to visit his friend to try to get him to join the cabinet, which was Joe Coors. He stayed at... Joe Coors' house, just right up the, from the brewery, huh. a matter of a block or so, oh, up the okay. hill. Okay, that's, that's I thought that's, that's that was nice really th interesting. I think so, too. But, Randall, yeah. before we have a little time left, we're going to talk about your upcoming book, uh, which uh, hopefully we can get on the screen. You have it on your, uh, your cell phone, right? Yes, sir. And the title, let me see what the title is. Well, Always Vote Your Conscience. Always Vote Your Conscience. Wait, wait. Uh, so do you have anything in your... Tell us about your book and what, what is in well, there. Well, the title came from uh, uh, years and years ago, uh, during my first term, I had gone over to the county building when they first built the Horry County Courthouse, and they were giving us a tour, and James Frazier, who was who became a very good friend of mine, um, was the county council member that took me on the tour. And if you remember, I was involved in a situation when I ran for party chairman of the Republican Party, and it was kind of ugly, and um, I was just whining to him a little bit about it. And he told me, he said, let me give you some advice. And, you know, he, he went on, he was midway through his time then, but you know, he went on to be the longest serving chair, uh, county council member in history. But he said, if you want to have a, a, a long career in politics, just remember three things. Always vote your conscience, don't take it personally, and don't fight the same old battles over and over again. And I thought that was the best advice that I've ever gotten in all the years that I uh, have been involved in, in government service. And uh, the book is basically a, a, a kind of a 
conglomeration of things looking at uh, on the federal level and, and really on government and politics in general, and I think in society how it's deteriorated over the years that, that I've been involved with it. It's gotten very mean-spirited, very personal, and, and none of these guys are following that. You know, they're, they're not, they're, they're not, uh, they're continuing to fight the same old battles over and over again. Even when something's been decided, they come right back out and start fighting over it again. It's gotten a lot more mean-spirited than it was even in 1996 when I was a volunteer and working on Bob Dole's presidential campaign, and I do a little bit of, of that. And then I also ran for Congress, as you remember, in 2012, and I had put together a a, a, a platform then and, and a lot of the issues. And so I kind of delve into some of my policy things too uh, and, and sort of I think it's a roadmap to uh, maybe try to get us the, the politics and government and whatever back on track, or at least my opinions of it. And I use a lot of government, per, uh, local government examples. Is I think there, is there any with, scandals in there? No, no, I stayed away from is, any is, of the person. Is there stuff. anything that you know that we want to know? As so uh, far as any piccadillies that occurred <laughs> in your tenure, what you observed, I, I, what? I really don't get into any of the. You kind didn't of see stuff. any naughty things happening no, in no, your book. No, no tell-alls. I might do that maybe in, you know if I'm lucky enough maybe. twenty years from now. But, Why isn't uh, it in this book? <laughs> because I wanted this to be more of a of a of a, of a, a book history that, book, a, a policy book. So there's some history in it, a policy book, some you ideas have that I have Nixon in the future. In the book? There's a lot of examples that come from the Nixon years, including what I think is um, would do us a lot of good. And that's you know he had a plan for government restructuring um, that was going to to divide. Uh, you know, it would put something like, for example, infrastructure all in one department, and I think that would make government look, work a whole lot more efficiently. And so I, I do go into that. I also talk about the family assistance program, which I think would have been a perfect way to get rid of all the welfare problems that we have, uh -huh. which was basically yeah. you know. The same kind of thing that this Yang yeah, guy I, is talking I, I, about. I don't want to interrupt you. I feel Chuck wants to say something. We're mm -hmm. ignoring him. What What did you want to add to that? No. <laughs> no. One of the things. One of the things that I read on the internet was about some of the old things that happened in Myrtle Beach years ago in the forties, fifties, etc. Well, he wouldn't know that. We just born. No. How do we I know what's happening I in the forties? What are you Myrtle about? Beach used to really be a gambling well, how capital. Would he know it, that? Well, actually, he wouldn't write, you write <laughs> yes, that in I did not, I did not know that, but my dad was a golf pro. So what I about story. the book? What, is he, what do you want to ask him about the book? Well, I was going to show book, Myrtle Beach. You know? uh, well, he, that's, you're going to write that later on. Maybe John Jenneret should address that, going back to the 40s. John He's Jenner. not that old. I'm that old, but not him. You're that old, but not him. <laughs> So therefore, you did a good job, Chuck. Oh, baby, very good. You're really right on the target. My God, you're good. Well, I thought you were going to say something to the effect that to what you discovered that you were shocked about, that that blew your your hair off when, when you discovered it. But nothing like that. No little scandals. No, I mean I do a lot no of no scandals. I, I at do all. talk a little bit about different initiatives that we did in local government that I think that could be imitated on a higher level. Um, but, you know, it's, it's no scandals. Well, were you talking about so. John Rose or anything like that? The mayor, I, the I, former mayor? I or? talk about the tourism development fee and how that, because um, I think it's so, a so great example. So how would that interest people in Iowa? I, I, well, I hope that they'll look at that and, and say, well, you know, these are examples of good government because I think that we're not getting very much of that on a national level at the moment. You're very good friends with Lindsey Graham. I thought you'd give us a little... I do tip on Lindsay, but you did nothing. It's not in even your book. Is Lindsay in your book? Yeah, certainly, it's in okay, there you go. It's, it's, it's in the what book about book. Lindsay? You want to tell us that we don't know about? <laughs> um, that he likes to eat what? Frankfurters, fish? What? <laughs> oh, I don't get into any of that that kind of thing. But I, you know, I do talk about him because he, Senator Graham, I think, is a really good example of somebody who's up there doing what he thinks is right. And you know, it's funny when he was uh, trying to change the way that we're handling the Supreme Court nominations and the federal judges, when he looked at the immigration system, people were mad as they could be with him. And now that he is, uh, you know, supporting President well, he, Trump. He finally he's... stepped out of his shoes of being a coward and went forward and protected <laughs> the president. But, but, but what about, all right. But, but, I, but I think he's trying to do what he does you're is just, right. You're just, and, and, we can have only about 10 <laughs> seconds and I have to give a little bit of plug for the show. If you want to see the show of other programs that we had during the year for Talking Politics, Go to YouTube and type in Talking Politics SC, click the button, and you voila, we come up, and there's about several shows there that you can see, previous shows that we did, so you get a good feeling for the shows. And again, we missed Paul today. I'm sorry he's sick, 
but that's life. We all get sick at some point in time. Feeling better. Thank you very much, Randall Wallace. Thank once you. more, thank you, Chuck Otwell. John Rossignor saying, I'm going to do like Paul. Goodbye. <laughs>